All right, so this is for Wednesday. This is talking about, oh, we're at lunch break again. You wanna go ahead and give to God's work, hit the shop now button on Facebook to take you to the donate now button at mfhlv.com. Check out our fireworks booth, Silverado Ranch in Bermuda. Help support our, help support our mind group, our, 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 fine art, our fine arts group and our youth group. Okay, we're talking about freedom. And I talked a little bit about your call to embrace the cross, which was Jesus took up freely out of his own free will that set us free. We're supposed to stand fast in that freedom and not be entangled again to a, um, a different yoke. But we're supposed to fall in love with the choice Jesus made, a choice to pick up the cross for somebody else. And I talked about how your calling to pick up that cross helps save you. Let me tell you where I get that from. This is um, an awesome verse in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 9. Now look at this. We're talking about the cross, the call of God on your life to pick up the cross for somebody else who has saved us. Remember, we, he has made us free. Remember Galatians 5.1? Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. It's a done deal. It's done. This is 2 Timothy 1.9 who has saved us and called us with a holy calling. He has saved us with a holy calling. And that calling, that purpose, we talked about the woman yesterday, right? Who was a mother and being a mother saved her from a lifestyle that would have jacked her up, came out of her own mouth. She received the calling to care for her daughter. She didn't have to. She could have never cared for the life of that child, much less raised that child. But because she did, it saved her from a life of destruction that she knew she was going to follow her own desires. But she gave it up for somebody else. And that's why I want to relate the calling and the cross to. And this is a freedom Will you freely make a choice like Jesus did? The liberty, the freedom, wherewith Christ has made us free, a free choice to lay down his life for someone else, to pick up the cross for someone else. Stand fast in that freedom wherewith Christ has made us free. Uh, back to the story here in this verse. He has saved us. This is, once again, I, I just read Galatians 5.1. We're back in 2 Timothy one nine. He has saved us and called us with a holy calling. He has saved us with a holy calling. Your purpose that God has made for you, I'm not talking just about your job or even your career, but something even higher. It's your purpose that God has called you to and made you for. Who has saved us with a holy calling and called us with a holy calling. I remember my calling at the time I was ministering to teenagers, my calling that I obeyed in, even though it was a sacrifice and I still love doing it, I got to where I loved it. You know, you're gonna love this stuff. The thing that God has called you to, it's your purpose. You're gonna love it. Just don't love the lie. Because that's, anyway, we talked about that yesterday. Um, love the truth. So you gotta love it though, you know? And we'll talk about that. Hopefully, we'll sneak that in today. But um, I remember um, working a job. I had a career. And I remember it all ending. It all just ended. So a lot of people have had to deal with a heavy end being dealt with them during this whole COVID thing. Businesses just ended. They say we'll never come back again. Um, so many things changing. And not just changing and waiting for COVID to get over, but ending. They've had to deal with a real, a real strong end. But you know that your calling and your purpose is greater than your job or even your career because it could end. Something could happen and it ends. In my case, I had an ending, a, a 10 year long stint in a career. It just ended. Now I fought to get it back and I was able to get it back. But during that time, 
What made me feel worthy and gave me purpose and knew I was on the right track and the right road and actually saved me from depression and just um, how you feel when you don't have a job <laughs> was my calling. At that time, it was continually working every Friday night with the youth. And I kept that calling up. And you know what? I never fell into despair. I never fell into a hopelessness because I was doing my purpose, what God had called me for. He saved us with a holy calling. That's what it says here in 2 Timothy 1.9, Paul to Timothy, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his purpose and his grace. That means his ability which was given to us in Christ Jesus before COVID, before the world began, before the culture and the culture changing to this side of the political, to that side of the political. God has a strong constant that doesn't waver. And it was around before the world began. That is 2 Timothy 1.9, jumping back to Galatians 5.1. Stand fast in this. Don't let this get away from you in this liberty where, we're, where with Christ has made us free. This is real freedom. It's not based on the culture. It's not a grip based on the political um, situation and its changes. It's not based on your career or a COVID coming or not. It is a freedom and a liberty that's based on your purpose and your calling in Christ Jesus before the world began, before the culture says what, what's good and what's approved and what's not approved, before the culture war. And I use those terms because of the, the things and the changes that are trying to be made. Um, and I loved putting up the flag for this particular posting because it, rep it represents the price that had to be paid for freedom. Stand fast in this. That's Galatians 5.1, the Apostle Paul, in this liberty, in this freedom. Um, Galatians 5.1 in the New American Standard Updated Version is it was for freedom that Christ set us free. Or another way of saying it is with freedom did Christ set us free. What was the freedom? He freely made a choice to lay down his life for us because he loved us. It's the cross. Um, it's the cross that gives us freedom because it separates us as we receive the cross of Christ, the blood that was shed, it separates us from our old nature, from our old lives, from our bloodline even. Um, there's so much said right now about race and whatnot, and it separates you from that. <laughs> you know, it separates you from uh, the, the idea, well, I want to say this correctly, but it's like there's so much confusion about sexual orientation. It separates you from that. The Bible says there's neither male nor female in Christ. I mean, what a separation. What a peace. You know, it separates you from these um, constraints of just, um, well, what society tries to put on people. It doesn't separate you from being a male or a female. It separates you from all the confusion. <laughs> so... Um, the blood of Jesus is stronger than any bloodline. But you got to love the cross. You got to fall in love with it. What is your choice? To fall in love with the confusion. And that's something where that's up to an individual. Will they love the truth? Or will they love the happening truth right now? <laughs> or will they love the truth that is the word of God that brings deliverance and freedom. Let me clarify this in a very simple way for you. I worked in the psych hospital for 20 years, just short of 20 years. I saw all the psychoses that are prevalently out there and something that I, some I could not even remember. Paranoid schizophrenia, um, uh, bipolar disorder, which I'm sure is called something else at that time. Um, Everything underneath the sun, depression, 
um, paranoia. I, I saw these things and destroy people's lives and try to attack people. And our job was to help them. And I want to say that the scariest one to me out of all of them that I feared, and not because I feared the illness, I, just the way it messed with a person was the one that's known as a delusion. And a delusion uh, that incapacitates a person is you believe, whether you believe you're, you know, Benedict Arnold or whether you believe you're a famous character or whether you believe something else about yourself, that was the scariest one because a person could function in society like that. And they could be discharged from the hospital and still have that delusion in their lives. And that's something where despite the facts, despite um, things being proven to you, the person chooses to believe the lie. That was the scariest one to me. And um, because you could live a normal life supposedly, but really you get in deep and the person's still deluded. They're just functioning in society. I bring that up because it's important to love the truth. Because if we don't, we're gonna love something. We'll love a lie. There's more on that that I want to share on, but it's deep. And the best way for you to check it out is check out our Wednesday night service where Pastor Jose is teaching on the last days and the strong delusion that God is in charge of. God is in charge of. All we have to do is love the truth. And the truth is Jesus came for freedom's sake to set us free from ourselves, from a lie. It's just simple, but it's real freedom. And it's part of your purpose and your call to love the cross of Christ, to fall in love with the purpose that God has in doing something for somebody else because you want to, not because a, a religious rule is making you, not because of any bondage, but because the love of Jesus in you for other people and the power of God to get it done. All right, shared a lot there. Um, but check us out for one more that's coming up. It's a week celebrating freedom and real freedom is found in the blood of Jesus that paid the price for us because he wanted to. It's for freedom's sake. It's for freedom's sake that Christ set us free. With freedom did Christ set us free. Galatians 5, 1. And that's our verse. Have an awesome day. Kiss to the King.